Last week I put together the Prusa 3D printer, but since this is going to be living in my workshop, I'm going to make an enclosure for it to keep the dust off of it. This printer has a number of exposed bearings and oiled surfaces that would attract dust like a magnet, and quickly gum up the moving parts and cause issues with the printer. So with that in mind, I built this. I started with a new 4x8 sheet of shop birch. At least that's what they call it where I bought it. This stuff is relatively inexpensive compared to most other sheet goods, and I've used it for the cabinets and the downdraft table. When I have a full 4x8 sheet to cut, I like to put it on my workbench with some styrofoam under it and cut it into manageable pieces. The top veneer of this plywood is very thin, and my saw blade could be sharper. So I end up with quite a lot of splintering using this method. But I usually try to cut the pieces a little bigger than I need them to be, and then trim them to size on the table saw. At the table saw, I cut the two side panels, as well as the two lower shelves, and then the top. Now I need to cut a bunch of strips for the doors. The door strips got a little scorched in the table saw, so I'm going to clamp them all together and sand them a bit. This will also help make sure they're all the same thickness. The filament holder on the top has this angle to it, so I'll do that cut on the bandsaw. There are two sides of course, and to help ensure that they're exactly the same, I use some double sided tape to hold them together while I cut them. This may not be the best way to do this cut, but I don't really have any other tools that could do a better job. I tried to stay as close to the line as I could, while making sure that the cut was on the waist side of the line so I can fix it if need be. And I think it turned out pretty good. I can now start to assemble the filament box. I use pocket screws to attach the sides to the bottom. And then add the support across the back. The front of the filament box will be made from plexiglass, so that I can see what filament I have available. This is cut on the table saw, and I set the blade to 45 degrees so that the edges line up well with the rest of the box. A couple of weeks ago I made a beverage caddy using some of this same plywood, and on a whim I painted the edges of it with this chalkboard paint that's been sitting around the barn for years. And I was pleasantly surprised with how well it turned out. The paint is really thick, so it does a good job of covering the layers of the plywood edge. And with this plywood being low cost, the layers are often uneven and there are a lot of voids. So I really wanted to cover all that up. While that paint dries, I'm going to start on the sides for the main body of the enclosure. These sides are too big to do the angle cut on the bandsaw, so I'm going to use a circular saw and freehand it. Again, I have both sides clamped down together to make sure they're both exactly the same. I didn't set the saw deep enough though, so I had to use the Japanese pull saw to finish off the cut. Then I sanded it all smooth while they are both still clamped together. The paint's dry now, so I can peel off the tape. This is always one of the most satisfying jobs for me. For some reason, I really enjoy watching the tape peel away and reveal the finished product. The top of this will open up so I can add and remove filament, so I'm going to use a piano hinge along the back where it won't be seen. Now I can just peel the protective film off the plexiglass and attach it to the front with a few screws. The filament box is almost done. Next, I glue on the front part of the lid. This is some leftover Brazilian pine plywood from the cabinet build. I'm also going to add some magnets to help hold the lid in place. The last time I used these magnets, I made a bit of a mess with the epoxy. This time, I'm just going to use some CA glue to hold them in place. And that was much easier than the epoxy. I can set this part aside for now and get to work on the main body of the enclosure. Just like the top, I'm going to hold it all together with pocket screws. The enclosure has a drawer on the bottom, and that'll be used to hold all the bits and pieces that go along with the printer. So I cut some plywood to width on the table saw, and then use the crosscut sled to cut them to length. Now a few more pocket holes. And then attach the pieces together. I didn't bother cutting any channels or anything for the bottom, I just glue it down and add some brad nails. If you're wondering what the X's are, this wood was used as packing material in one of the machines I bought a while back. I think it was the bandsaw, but I'm not too sure. 
But I don't like to waste wood, so I'm using it up here because it was just about the right size. I did have to trim it down a little bit with the palm router. To attach the drawer slides, I just add a small spacer on the bottom and then line up the front of the slide with the edge of the box, then put in a couple of screws. And then slide the drawer into place, move the drawer out a little, and then pull the slide to the edge of the drawer and add another screw. Then add all the rest of the screws. This method seems to work fine for me. I'm not sure if it's the best method, but it's pretty quick and simple, so it's the way I do it. With the drawer installed, I can add the drawer front and a 3D printed handle. Again, I use the chalkboard paint on all of the edges. When it dries, I get to peel off the tape. Time for the front doors. I set the fence to one third of the width of the strips that I had sanded earlier, and add a featherboard to help hold the pieces up against the fence while I run them through. I run each one through once, and then flip them around and run them through again. There is a little bit left in the middle, so I adjust the fence and clear that bit out. This should make sure that the channels are right down the center of the board. Now I can cut them all to their correct lengths on the crosscut sled, and then set up a stop lock to cut all the tenons. The doors will also have some plexiglass, so I can cut that while I'm here as well. The long cut on the plexiglass seems to work better with the bandsaw. I've noticed that the plexiglass wants to hop on the table saw. So I tried it out on the bandsaw and it worked much better. Now it's finally time to assemble the doors, and the new Bessie clamps are great for this task. Once those dried, I added some holes for the hinges, and then painted all the edges. For the backing, I'm using this quarter inch MDF, and after cutting it to size, I just attached it with some brad nails. Well, that's mostly done. I added an LED strip to the inside for lighting, and drilled a hole in the back for the cords to go through. I also drilled a hole through the filament box into the enclosure so that I have somewhere to pass the filament through. The drawer on the bottom is going to be organized with this box system designed by Alexander Chapel. I'll add a link to his channel in the description. He's created a really versatile system for drawer storage that consists of these base plates that you can glue down to the drawer bottom and then place the various size boxes in whatever arrangement suits your needs. They even have a place for labels that also doubles as a handle when you need to pull one of the boxes out to use it. I've been printing these night and day since I got the new printer. Both the Snapmaker and the Prusa are going full time because I plan to use these boxes in several drawers throughout the shop. I will have this shop organized in no time. Click here to see more about the Prusa printer.